Welcome uh, viewers to the 13th lecture of the online course Computer Control of Machine Tools and Processes. So, in this particular lecture we will be discussing somewhat about interpolators uh, and to a large extent linear interpolators. What is the uh, purpose of having interpolators? First of all, if we are having a continuous system, continuous control system, we are going to cut profiles and there we might have to cut straight lines. I mean we might have to cut along straight lines or along a circular arc or in a more uh, generic way we might have to cut along complex curves also. Not only spatial curves, but also three dimensional that means 3D curves. First of all, if we have to cut along a straight line, it uh, apparently uh, seems to be uh, quite an easy task. Okay. Cutting along a straight line seems to be the easiest possible or the simplest possible movement. So, uh, why, have, why do we have to have this interpolator, linear interpolator for this? This is because in case of interpolation, we are only being provided with I mean the program is only providing the machine controls with an initial point and a final point. So, in between the points or the locations through which the machine is I mean the cutter is going to move relative to the workpiece, these are not provided. Also, the velocities that are supposed to be developed by the uh, different axes of motion that is also not known. So, this way two specific tasks of the interpolator emerges. One is the interpolator has to make the cutter maintain a definite velocity uh, rate of velocity along the uh, profile of the workpiece. So, along the path the cutter has to move at the feed rate programmed. Second, in order to move along the path, the cutter has to have a definite ratio existing between the different axis velocities. If it is linear motion, these axis velocities are constant. Therefore, the ratio also remains constant. This is the way in which linear interpolator can be specified. So, let us have a look what we have. So, linear interpolators can be made by software or hardware and hardware interpolators may be made by a number of digital differential analyzers, which we have already uh, you know uh, studied in a previous lecture on logic circuits and decoders. It is also possible to make software counterparts of this particular interpolator, which is sometimes referred to as reference pulse interpolator. So, interpolation as we just now discussed, it might not always be restricted to linear and circular interpolation, but also may involve parametric curve interpolation. And these curve interpolators may be offline or online. So, first of all, let us take a uh, look at a numerical problem. This will help us in establishing the different relations which exist between different parts of an interpolator. What is this problem? This problem states that find out the basic length unit, the interpolator frequency f and the number of interpolator pulses sent through the AND gate of the x axis control loop for the command in the line number 30 for a CNC closed loop contouring control or continuous control machine with encoder number of holes 200, lead screw pitch 4 millimeters, number of starts equal to 1. There is a position down counter and there is an up down counter also in the control loop. There is a digital and to analog converter and M is the permanent magnet DC motor, E the amplifier, T the taco generator and E the encoder. We are already conversant with this sort of uh, you know uh, control loops. I will just 
reiterate one or uh, one or two very important points that is interpolative pulses are coming in and first of all they decrement the position down counter it is the you, you know uh, custodian of the position. So, it will only allow a specific number of pulses to be passed through. The up down counter keeps track of the balance of the pulses of the interpolator and the encoder while the interpolator is filling up the up down counter with higher and higher numbers the encoder is going on decrementing the up down counter contents. So, that when the motor is rotating the encoder at uh, rotating the lead screw at the you know uh, required rpm that means the programmed rpm at that time the up down counter content becomes steady. So, that in linear interpolation a steady state speed is reached this thing we have already discussed. So, I do not want to elaborate on it once more. So, let us concentrate upon the problem we can formulate the problem solution this way that is we will find out the basic length unit we will find out the feed along the x axis we will find out the rate of pulses output by the encoder and we will find out the number of pulses output by the encoder for line number 30 and that way we will solve the problem. What exactly is the problem? The interpolator pulses the pulse rate is required what is the train rate of pulses coming along the line of interpolator pulses that line which is drawn on the left hand side these pulses what is the frequency for this particular command. Let us have a look at the command n 20 g 0 1 x 20 y 40 f 100. So, the initial point for the next line will be 20 comma 40 from the point 20 comma 40 in line number 30 we are reaching x equal to 50 and y is equal to 80 which means x is moving from 20 to 50 30 millimeters and y is moving from 40 to 80 which means 40 millimeters. So, 30 millimeters along x and 40 millimeters along y and the feed is a 100 millimeters. So, let us go to the solution. So, we can solve the problem this way we first understand that the basic length unit must be equal to lead screw pitch divided by the encoder number of holes which is 20 microns 0 0.02 millimeters. Amount of movement along x we found out just now is 30 millimeters movement along y is equal to 40 millimeters this also we have found out just now. Displacement ratio is equal to velocity ratio for for straight line movements what does this mean it means that whenever uh, motion is taking place along a line a part of it along x a part of it along y in that case the velocity along x and velocity along y will be having the same ratio as the displacement along x and displacement along y in case of linear motion. So, as we are having linear interpolation here so, V x by V y is equal to delta x by delta y that means, it is equal to 30 by 40. So, 3 fourth and we also know since the feed velocity is 100 millimeters per minute therefore, the resultant velocity along the cutter path must be V x square plus V y square root over equal to 100. From this we can easily find out the value of v x equal to 60 millimeters per minute. So, once v x has been found out we can find out that uh, 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 sorry when when v x has been found out from the basic length unit which has been calculated we can find out the rest of the terms required. For example, when the table is moving at 60 millimeters per minute in the x axis along the x axis the encoder must be sending 60 divided by 0 0.02 pulses per minute why is this so because 60 millimeters per minute to the encoder is not exactly 60 but it is equal to the number of basic le length units it has to uh, uh, you know generate in the corresponding time so let's see 60 divided by 0 0.02 must be equal to 3000 pulses per minute. 
So, in order to you know develop a speed of 60 millimeters per minute or rather when the table develops 60 millimeters per minute encoder sends 3000 pulses per minute. So, now we understand that the encoder pulse rate is 3000 pulses per minute. So, at steady state for linear velocity the encoder pulse rate uh, must be equal to the interpolator pulse rate. What does this mean? We already established that when we are having linear velocity a steady state has been reached and at that time interpolator pulse rate becomes equal to the encoder pulse rate. So, since encoder pulse rate has been found out to be 3000 interpolator pulses also must be 3000. So, answer is interpolator pulse rate must be 3000 pulses per minute and how many pulses uh, are being uh, you know passed through at the AND gate it must be equal to uh, uh, it must be corresponding to 30 millimeters because 30 millimeters is the movement along x divide 30 millimeters by 0 0.02 and you will get 1500 pulses. So, 1500 pulses are being sent through. So, this is the answer to the question. Now, let us see uh, a DDA based interpolator. In the DDA based interpolator as we have discussed previously there is an input pulse rate f it enters a feed DDA which is having m number of bits and uh, inside this m bit counter uh, number s is stored. So, s, s has to be smaller in size compared to 2 to the power m minus 1 that, that can be the maximum size of s. The output pulse rate of any such DDA is always equal to f multiplied by delta x which is inside that particular counter divided by 2 to the power n if n be the number of bits of that DDA. So, the pulse rate output of the feed DDA goes to x DDA and y DDA and they send out their respective pulse rates to the x motor and the y motor. This is the basic structure of the linear interpolator and the output pulse rate is ultimately found out to be the input pulse frequency multiplied by 10 into v, v is the programmed feed rate along the cutter path into delta x delta x is the incremental x motion divided by L, L is the length uh, segment of the path and multiplied by 2 to the power m plus n. This is the pulse rate along uh, pulse rate out of the x DDA. So, let us so and s also has an expression 10 into v by L where these things we have already defined and f has a value of 2 to the power m plus n by 10. So, let us take a numerical problem during DDA based linear interpolation the cutting tool center has to move from point 2010 to the point 12060 at a speed of 3 meters per minute. The coordinates of the points are in millimeters the table size is 600 into 600 millimeters the maximum table speed is 12, milli, 12 meters per minute for a minimum distance of 50 millimeters and the basic length unit is given, given to be 10 microns find out the bit sizes of all three DDAs the S word in the feed DDA that means the S word which has to be put in this particular case the values of P x and P y the clock frequency and the output frequency of feed DDA and of course, the output frequency of x and y axis DDAs. So, first of all let us see the bit sizes of all three DDAs. So, we understand that 600 millimeters is the table side size on either x or y direction. If this be so, then the you know the and, and if the basic length unit is 10 microns in that case we can easily find out what will be the maximum size of delta x that means maximum possible incremental motion 
So, if we suppose that the maximum possible incremental motion is equal to the, si the, the length of the table itself which is 600 millimeters, therefore, 600 divided by basic length unit is must be equal to those many number of bits or the size of the uh, size of the number which can represent which can be the maximum delta x or incremental x motion. So, if 600 millimeters is our motion then 600 into uh, you know 100 is the maximum number which has to be accommodated in the feed uh, x feed dda x dda ok. So, let me reiterate 600 sorry 60,000 being equal to 600 divided by 10 microns is the maximum number which has to be accommodated in the x dda uh, counter. Now, x dda counter is of n bits. So, the maximum number it can accommodate is 2 to the power n minus 1. So, simply by calculation we can find out if n is equal to 16 and uh, then 2 to the power n minus 1 is 65536 and this is the smallest counter which can accommodate 60,000. So, we come to the conclusion that the size of the counters inside x and y dda must be 60 uh, sorry must be 16 each 16 bit counters inside x and y dda in the same way we understand that the feed dda which has s word inside which is of m bit size it can contain or rather it has to contain the maximum possible feed rate number or s word. In that case the maximum possible number is given by the condition given in the problem. The condition is the maximum table feed or rather table speed is 12 meters per minute for a minimum distance of 50 millimeters. So, we understand that if we take a uh, table size uh, sorry table speed of 12 divided by the corresponding length of 50 millimeters we will be able to compute the maximum value of the s word. So, highest value is the highest velocity is 12 meters per minute and lowest distance is 50 millimeters therefore, maximum s word is 10 into v by l. So, this thing is expressed in length units per minute. So, this is equal to 2400. So, in order to accommodate 2400 which is the maximum possible s word we have to have m bits of uh, sorry m equal to 12. So, 2 to the power 12 minus 1 will be able to accommodate 2400. Having understood that we understand that m is equal to 12 and n is equal to 16. So, that the frequency the input clock frequency which is equal to 2 to the power m plus n divided by 10 pulses per minute we can easily compute it to be 2 to the power 28 divided by 10 equal to pulses per minute equal to 447392 pulses per second. So, f has been computed as we are already uh, we uh, as we have already calculated the values of m and n. Coming to the second part of the problem for the particular case that has been given incremental x and incremental y in basic length units they are 10,000 and 5,000 respectively. How did we find this out? We found out the initial point and the final point their differences delta x and delta y divided it by the basic length unit and obtained these two values. Basic length unit incidentally just to remind you was 10 microns. So, now the length of cut ok the length of cut must be the 
square root of their of the sum of squares of these two and therefore, it is equal to 11180 in basic length units. Okay. So, why are we finding out the uh, length of cut? Because v by l has to be calculated for this particular case. So, output frequency of feed DDA for this movement. So, what is this feed DDA? That is the first DDA which was existing. Let us have a quick look. This is the feed DDA. We will find out the output frequency of this one, then multiply this by the you know. Uh, by, by the delta corresponding delta x value and that way we will get these two frequencies. So, output frequency of the feed dd for this movement is f into using the you know the same only one formula is there f into s divided by 2 to the power n. Since we know all the values now we put 447392 as the value of f we put 10 into v equal to 10 into 30 sorry 300,000. That means, velocity is 3 meters per minute given for the particular case that is divided by the basic length units. So, basic length units per minute divided by length expressed in the same length units that means, basic length units divided by 2 to the power m which is 2 to the power 12 and that way we obtain 293. 09.43 PPS. We are converting, uh, we are having this in PPS because f is in PPS pulses per second. So, having obtained the output frequency of feed DDA, we can easily obtain the frequencies of x and y DDA. How is this so? Because feed DDA multiplied again by the same form that is f into x by 2 to the power n. So, we have feed DDA frequency multiplied by delta x divided by 2 to the power n, where n is equal to 16 will give us 4472 pulses per second. This is V x. Once again feed DDA pre output frequency multiplied by, by the delta y value divided by 2 to the power 16 gives us 2236 pulses per second. This is V y. Now, the vector sum of v x and v y is to be 3 meters per minute. So, if v x is equal to 447 uh, sorry 4472 basic length units per second, it is correspondingly equal to 44.72 millimeters per second equal to 26.83 millimeters per minute. In a similar manner, if we compute v y, it will come out to be 1341.5 millimeters per minute and therefore, if we combine this these two vectorially their result will come out to be 3 meters per minute. So, therefore, we have found out first of all m, we have found out n, n is 16, m is 12, f has been found out as 447392 pulses per second. The output frequency of the feed DDA has been found out to be 29 3 0 9.43 pulses per second and v x and v y frequencies have also been found out. Okay. Let us take one multiple choice question. In this multiple choice, choice question what is given? You are joining DRDO which we already know to be defense research development organization and they ask you to design a grenade with programmable delay before detonation. You know grenades when you take out some pin from that, after that a definite time is permitted beyond which an explosion or detonation occurs. So, here we are talking about a grenade where the detonation time or detonation delay is programmable. Inside a grenade, inside the grenade there is to be a chip with a fixed clock at 1024 pulses per second, which is input to a DDA. So, all these things are inside the grenade, because DDAs and uh, clock, uh, small clocks etcetera, they are you know miniaturized and they can easily fit into a grenade. So, which is input to a DDA and the first overflow of the DDA will cause detonation. So, it is simply like this, 
I have a clock, I have a DDA, I am putting in some number and the first overflow pulse which comes out, the out first output pulse is going to cause detonation. The grenade will have buttons to load the to load the counter of the DDA with three numbers for three detonation delay times 2 seconds, 4 seconds and 8 seconds. What should be the minimum DDA size to make this work? So, we know f, we do not know the number of bits inside the counter of the DDA and we know the required pulse rate outputs at the you know uh, detonation side. So, the answers are 2 to the power 10 minus 1. So, DDA size we know is 2 to the power n minus 1. So, that way we have given, given it in that format. 2 to the power 10 minus 1, 2 to the power 13 minus 1 and 2 to the power 18 minus 1 and none of the others of course. So, let us try this out. So, the answer is the rates of do, uh, detonation are, so the rate at which the detonations are supposed to take place that is half per second because if 2 is the time of time delay for detonation that means, the first detonation is going to take place after 2 seconds have passed and therefore, if 1 detonation takes place in 2 seconds therefore, per second I am having half a detonation. This is the rate of output pulses required for this particular case. In the same way, if 8 seconds are supposed to pass before the detonation therefore, 1 by 8 per uh, detonation per second is taking place. So, we have the frequency of detonation to be half, one fourth and one eighth per second. So, let us assume the number of bits in the DDA to be x. So, what does this mean? That the counter size in the DDA is equal to uh, you know x bits. So, the maximum number that it can contain it is equal to 2 to the power x minus 1. So, now let us look at the lowest output pulse rate that can be obtained from this DDA. What do we mean by the lowest uh, output pulse rate? 1024 is fixed the frequency, then hardware size we are already assuming to be of x bits. So, 2 to the power x denominator is fixed and therefore, the x which gets multiplied as the number contained in the counter, if it is the lowest possible value, x inside the counter can only take up integer values. That means, its, its minimum value can be 1. If it is 0, then there is no point having that uh, you know uh, that DDA. So, minimum value is 1 and then it can take other positive integer values. So, if we are planning to get the slowest detonation rate at 1 8th per second, let us equate 1024 divided by 2 to the power x into 1. That means, I will put a 1 bit there inside. So, let us uh, work out and see how much that comes out to be. We have here 1 0 2 4 is the frequency multiplied by only 1 here divided by 2 to the power x equal to the frequency that we want. If I put the smallest number, I should get the smallest frequency, lowest frequency. So, that way 2 to the power x becomes equal to 1024 is nothing but 2 to the power 10 if I am not wrong. 2 to the power 10 multiplied by 2 to the power 3 since powers are added I can write 2 to the power 13 and therefore, x becomes equal to 13. So, if you have uh, the number of bits inside this counter to be 13, then we can we can definitely ensure that this is going to have detonation times very easily of you know by putting 1024 divided by 2 to the power x into 2 this is going to give us 
double of this therefore we, we are going to get one fourth so on and so forth we if we put three we are going to have one so this way we can make this particular grenade work okay thank you very much thank you